CBS Sports and the St. Louis Sports Commission and National Sportsmanship Foundation present a celebration of class and character, honoring Bill Bradley, Adam Wainwright, Cody's Wish and Godolphin Racing, and those who show extraordinary sportsmanship, plus a special musical performance by rising star Cooper Allen. From the historic Steeple Theater in St. Louis, it's the 2023 Musial Awards, presented by Maryville University. Now our host, Mike Bush. Thank you. Welcome to the Musial Awards, honoring the year's greatest displays of humanity in sports. Those moments that define courage and character, the stories that need to be told. We're in the great city of St. Louis. This is the place where legendary baseball great Stan Musial made his mark. These annual awards are given in Stan's name, not just because of his superhuman consistency on the field, but for the excellence he embodied every day and for the common decency he showed everyone. Stan the man's legacy lives on as we honor those who rise above, those who challenge us to be kinder, those who inspire us through their stellar sportsmanship. Take tonight's first honoree, for example, a high school basketball player from Minnesota who puts a full court press on his community to do the right thing. At La Crescent Hoka High School in Minnesota, one of the best teachers just might be a student. Noah Bierke Weiser is the senior captain of the Lancers basketball team. Really an exceptional athlete. Um, offensively, one of our best uh, perimeter shooters. But recently his impact went far beyond points on the scoreboard. After starting the season on the road, the Lancers finally came home to play a rival, Fillmore Central. That was the first conference game we were playing all season. The usual electric atmosphere was crackling with intensity. Down the stretch of that game, um, there were some calls that just didn't go our way. And that's when some fans started pushing the boundaries of enthusiasm. A few showered the refs with a downpour of disapproval. A familiar experience to seasoned officials. The Lancers won that game 62-53, but Noah went home in no mood to celebrate. He decided to make a plea on social media. At first, I, I said, well, I don't know if you should. You know, as a parent, you want to look at all outcomes and make sure your kids are making good choices. Noah thought something had to be said. And so he went to his Facebook page and started typing, directing his message to Lancer fans and the Lancer community. As a captain of the varsity team, I would like to come out and say that we need to stop yelling at the refs, us as players and as spectators in the stands. Nobody will ever call a perfect game and everybody makes mistakes. As players and spectators, we need to let the players play, the officials officiate, and the fans cheer. I know I'm not perfect in this too, but we need to change. I hope we can all come together as a community and change for the better. Just moments after sharing his post, it ignited like wildfire. It's a great sign of a leader, right? Just being able to say things that maybe not everybody is going to agree with. The Lancers finished the season with an impressive record of 18 and 10. But by all accounts, the biggest win was that both players and fans were more respectful. For a, for a high school senior to post that um, and to put himself out there like that, I thought, wow, you know, that's really a brave thing to do. I always kind of go by, if you don't really have anything nice to say, then don't say it at all. Noah Bierke Weiser showing us all that victory isn't just measured in wins, but in the way we carry ourselves on and off the court. Who better to present the Musial Award to Noah than a pair of the most respected college basketball officials to hail from the St. Louis area. Please welcome Ed Hightower and Ron Zetcher. <laughs> and accepting the Musial from La Crescent, Minnesota, here's Noah Bjerke Weiser.
did it make a difference for the rest of the season? Yeah, you could definitely see the change through our community. I don't know about every other school around the area, but whenever we came to play them, most of the fans uh, showed up and were very respectful. So that's called making a difference right there. So Ed and Ron, I just want to know what your reaction is for a student to do something like this. Well, as referees, being on the receiving end of some of those uh, booths, <laughs> you know what we Thank you for using your voice to focus on civility, humanity, respect, dignity, and we want you to know we're so proud of you. He's what's good about our world. He really is. He's awesome. Thank you. Let's hear it for our winner, Noah Berkey Weezer. Congratulations. In the early weeks of the college football season, Grambling State made a 200 mile trip to Baton Rouge to take on the LSU Tigers. Midway through the third quarter, Grambling sophomore Jaquavius Richmond collided with a teammate on a punt return and suffered a frightening head and neck injury. After undergoing surgery, he spent several days recovering in a local hospital, hours from his family and his campus community. But by his side was another program from Baton Rouge, a longtime conference foe. The Jaguars from Southern University put the rivalry with Grambling aside and delivered a treatment program all their own. I think to paint the picture of who Jaquavius is uh, to his teammates, one, we all respect him, we love him. Goes to the far sideline, coming up the hash marks to the middle of the field and dives inside the 30-yard line. And the Grambling player is down on the field. I thought maybe it was just a normal injury. Somber mood now here in Baton Rouge. Jaquavis Richmond was injured on special teams moments ago. We're in Baton Rouge. We're playing a game uh, that's a away game. I got a phone call from Coach Dooley from Southern University, and he said, Hugh, I want you to know we're thinking of you. We're going to be with Jaquavius. Uh, we want to lend that support. And that meant the world to me. I mean, obviously, it's one of our biggest rivals. Southern is a very loving, caring HBCU community. Jaquavius got hurt in Baton Rouge, and he would have to stay in Baton Rouge for a certain amount of time due to his injury. So we knew that, and we just wanted him to feel like we're with him, and he's at home, even though he's away from home. We came on his birthday, so that's something that I feel like meant a lot. We got him gifts, and we wanted him to feel welcome. I come in, I see all these people, I'm like, wow. Like, just to see all these people here from Southern, even though I, I, I don't like them at all, you know? But like, just to have the love from them, Ray, it means a lot. They didn't know this player. They went out of their way and made it a priority. They were gonna be very intentional of being there for someone they didn't know. There's not a war big enough for Southern University. I just I just wish Jaquavius, if you hear me, bro, if you see this, I just hope you get better, bro. I hope you get everything. God blesses you with everything in the world, and you deserve it, bro. Just keep fighting, keep being you. Now, Grambling and Southern are both longtime members of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. We're pleased to have the league represented tonight by Senior Associate Commissioner Brian Hicks. And accepting the Musial Award on behalf of Southern is Deputy Athletic Director Rodney Kirshner and Associate Athletic Director of Administration Johnny Rodney. Let's hear it for the Southern University Jaguars. <laughs> Ajani, why did you guys want to do this? This situation kind of hit home for us. We experienced something a few years ago with one of our student athletes, and we immediately knew that we had to come together to display HBCU unity to uplift this student athlete in whatever possible way that we could. Ronnie, what, what does this say about the university? The love and passion that we have, not only for our, our fans and our alumni, but for everyone. And uh, this was just a way to give back, and it was just the right thing to do. Congratulations, way to go Southern. 
Coming up, true sportsmanship prevails when rivals rescue an injured opponent. Maryville University is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Musial Awards. In these trying times, the values of civility, compassion, and sportsmanship remind us of what truly matters in sports and in life. Stan the Man embodied those values, and Maryville is honored to stand by his legacy. So on behalf of one of the fastest growing universities in the nation, Maryville welcomes you to the Musial Awards, the most important night in all of sports. Celebrating the 15th anniversary of the home run that became a pinnacle moment of sportsmanship. Please welcome back to the Musial Awards, Mallory Holtman, Liz Wallace, and Sarah Bradley. We're delighted to be here this evening, not just to remember our Musial moment, but also to recognize another group of college softball players who followed in our footsteps. It turns out this past year, history repeated itself. At Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida, they offer classes in more than 100 degree programs. You good? You ready? Yes. But right, recently, their softball field became a classroom of compassion. It happened last February when Southeastern hosted Grandview from Des Moines, Iowa. They were ranked number 11 at the time. We were number four, so we knew that would be a good win for us. And now it'll be up to Caitlin Moses. Who Trailing four to one in the fifth inning, Caitlin Moses came to bat for Grandview with two outs and the bases loaded. I was feeling confident in how I was seeing the ball. Is lifted into deep left center. I'm like, wow. Like I turn around, I'm just like admiring the ball as it goes by, right? She hit it, hit it far, very far. As soon as it went over, kind of started to celebrate. I was pumped up and I immediately felt, you know, my ankle kind of give out fell to the ground and it went from excitement to, oh my gosh, what just happened? Instead of running around the bases, Caitlin was writhing between the bases in excruciating pain. Her teammates can't touch her or the run doesn't count. Like nobody, like on her team, her coaches, the athletic trainers, nobody can touch her. At that time, the two Southeastern players say, well, coach, can we carry her around? They were like, we're, the, we're allowed to pick her up, right? And they were like, yeah, like you're the only ones that are allowed to help her. And then me and Leah just kind of knew that that was the right thing to do. With a spirit that defied the scoreboard, Chapel Cunningham and Leah Gonzalez carried Caitlin Moses around the bases, exchanging the lead for a lesson in true sportsmanship. She just kept saying sorry, and then we were like, no, like, you hit a home run, like you deserve this credit right now. So what a moment here in Lakeland, Florida. They carry her to home plate and the players hand her off to Caitlin's teammates. They then go back to their positions. Like it was just what we're supposed to do. Back in Iowa, Caitlin's slow but steady recovery from that ankle injury continues. But as time goes by, her gratitude to the women at Southeastern remains as steady as her determination. Their instant reaction was to help me, and I'm so thankful for that. Grandview won the game, but sometimes it's not the final score that deserves the spotlight. To think about their actions in that situation certainly means life is bigger than the game. Southeastern gave us a master class in kindness, illuminating the day with their humanity. We're delighted she's here to show her gratitude to Leah and Chapel. So let's welcome the Grandview catcher and home run hitter, Caitlin Moses. <laughs> and accepting the Musials, Southeastern University teammates Chapel Cunningham and Leah Gonzalez. <laughs> so, what did you think when Leah and Chapel? offered to pick you up. It was almost instant. There was no thought behind it. They knew that was the right thing to do, and they did it, and it makes me emotional talking about it. But um, it was so kind. Did it ever cross your mind, if you, if you do this, you'll now be down a run? I think 
it did, May 1st, 2nd, <laughs> yeah, but that's normal. I was like, you know what? No, like, she deserves that, yeah. like we said earlier. We just were very impressed by her, and if that happened to us, we knew that we would want someone else to do the same thing. Coming up, a pep dance act of courtside sportsmanship strikes a chord of kindness during March Madness. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Museal Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you. At maryville.edu. Edward Jones, life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. And Lexus, experience amazing. Well, March Madness, that's a title on its own that conjures up images of brackets and buzzer beaters. This past spring, the men's basketball team from Fairleigh Dickinson University made the tournament as a 16 seed. The Knights from New Jersey faced the daunting task of taking on top seed Purdue. Adding to the challenge, FDU lacked what most schools take for granted, a source of support. So, in stepped a professor and a band of college students with their own form of sportsmanship. They went out of their way to give the Knights an instrumental lift. It is a very interesting story when you start to talk about FDU's band. Our band, hmm. <laughs> we don't have a band. And now they take on the number one seed, Purdue Boilermakers. Obviously we knew we were gonna play Purdue, we were gonna go to Columbus, and then all of a sudden we were like, oh my God, what are we gonna do with this band? We reached out to the Dayton band. Could they come and be a part of FDU? Hi, I'm Dr. Willie Morris. Uh, I am a professor here in the music department where I teach saxophone. One of the most favorite part of my jobs is being the director of the Flyer Pep Band. There's only one pep band that's the best damn pep band in the land. When I got the email that they were looking for people, I was like, I'm not doing anything. Like, I like doing pep band. Uh, let's go. I'm going to go to Columbus. And so you get a chance to play at a game. This team gives you this opportunity. You can't turn it down. Somewhere in a file cabinet, somewhere in one of our administrative buildings, someone discovered a fight song, uh, which I don't think has been heard, at least by me or anyone who's been on campus over the past 25 years. We gave it to the band director and he said, we can play it, we'll do it for you. I think our goal was in entering into the game against Purdue to stay competitive. Uh, it's so fun that we're gonna be here. I can say to the March Madness game, they're gonna lose. Go, 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 FDU! As the game started and progressed, suddenly it seemed like there was a possibility for something I think none of us ever fathomed. Good offensive pull, what a pass. And the finish! Where did he get that jacket? <laughs> they're winning, and then we're like, okay, wait, we have a shot in this. Four, straight away three! Let's go! We owe the Dayton band everything. They energized a group of individuals trying to go up against uh, Goliath and that we needed all the help we could get. Look at the cutter, Munden! Because this is what we do, we, we help others when they're in need, you know. We fill, the, we fill the void, if there's a void, we fill it, you know. It's the core of who they are. And that just, uh, it, it just warms my heart to know that. I think it, is a real show of teamwork and sportsmanship um, and kind of just is really what uh, Flyer Pepper is all about. To thank and salute the Flyer Pep Band, we're so glad to have with us the Director of Athletics at Fairleigh Dickinson, Brad Hurlbut. <laughs> and accepting the Musial Award, representing his ensemble of students, here's University of Dayton Professor of Music and Flyer Pep Band Director, Dr. Willie Morris III. I'm just wondering how you guys pulled it off. They pull the music 
out of a drawer. It hadn't been playing for years, and like 24 hours later, you guys had it down. That's what we do. We, <laughs> we, we make things happen. When he, uh, uh, they sent us the music. I had a very talented uh, young man in the band that I know worked on arranging and handed him and said, okay, let's make this happen. They'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you write this song that you hadn't heard before? It's, it's emotional for us. It's great. And, <laughs> and, and they record it for us, and we play it at our home games now. N not only men's and women's basketball, but soccer every time we score a goal. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you. And Willie, I hear you have something up your sleeve before you we know, go. You know, I think I do. This year's Museal Awards made their entrance on the Worldwide Technology Red Carpet. Worldwide Technology. Make a new world happen. Coming up, Adam Wainwright's all-star approach on and off the field. Stay in the know with CBS Sports HQ. A 24-7 free network that brings you the latest news, picks, scores, and highlights from all the sports you love. Watch CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. The Musial Award for Extraordinary Character is one of two special honors we bestow each year. It recognizes an individual who demonstrates remarkable class, perseverance, and overall sportsmanship. Those qualities define Adam Wainwright. And as he celebrates his retirement after a brilliant 18-year career with the St. Louis Cardinals, it's only appropriate that we celebrate him with this prestigious award named for Stan the Man. For the first time since 1982, St. Louis has a World Series winner. One of the finest human beings to ever wear the Cardinal uniform. A competitor on the field and someone who could bring a team together off of it, all while being an ambassador and an emblem of what the Cardinals ought to be. You work at it, you respect that you have for everyone. It changed my life. Unbelievable human outside of just his skill set on the field, um, the way he treats people. He walks into a room and others are better just because he's in it. You couldn't ask for a better teammate that's going to gonna pour into you on the field. And when you walk out of there being a teammate with Adam Wainwright, you're a better person because of it. He's created some incredible memories for fans, but he's also impacted a lot of lives off the field. I heard stories over and over again about how Adam showed individual teammates ways to balance family and profession, to be a present father, to be involved in a community, but to dream bigger about impacting the world and Adam and Jenny helped build the IDD Children's Home. In this country of, of devastation and poverty everywhere, we got to see this little glimmer of hope. And for us, it was life-changing to watch that grow over the years and the water and sanitation that Adam and Jenny's organization has been a part of and, and bringing clean drinking water. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of character to uh, sustain that over two decades in this game. To do it for 18 plus years in front of this crowd, in this stadium, in this city, I wouldn't change anything in the world for that. I love y'all so much. Thank you for embracing me. Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the 2023 Musial Award for Extraordinary Character, Adam Wainwright. I'm wondering if in the course of your career that there was a moment of humanity, a moment of sportsmanship that you may still think about. You know, uh, there was a game this year where uh, I pitched like 
you know, not good. <laughs> Which I had a few of those this year, I apologize. But um, uh, there was one in particular where, uh, where uh, a, a young pitcher of ours came in behind me and he pitched even worse almost. And, and uh, that was a moment for me, though, to be able to wrap my arms around him and just tell him that, that I loved him and that I cared for him and that I was rooting for him and that we're going to figure it out. And, you know, and, I, and I think that was done to me also. When you play for the St. Louis Cardinals for so long and you get an award in Stan Musial's name, what does that mean to you? Well, Stan has set the bar for us in the community um, from playing, obviously, but also just from being a good dude. You know, just, in, just everywhere we go, there's a story about Stan. You know, Stan, you know, you'd sign autographs for an hour. Stan used to sign for two hours, you know? <laughs> and uh, there was this great aura about him when he walked in. You know, the, there's a lot of people you walk in, and you're like, whoa, that person's famous. And you looked at Stan, and you're like, wow, that guy's awesome. Tell us how Big League Impact came about and why it was so important to you. It started originally because my wife and I got very involved with a couple of organizations that were providing basic essential needs, immediate help, uh, food, water, shelter situations. And so we just caught this bug like, this is unbelievable, man. We want to do more and more of this. And as my brother and I started thinking, well, what is that thing for everybody in Major League Baseball. And like if you're sitting here tonight, what is that thing for you that keeps you up at night when you wake up in the morning? You want to go and alleviate. You want to go help. And finally, when you leave here tonight and you talk about the Musial Awards to other people, what will you say? This is just a night of light. This is just a, a good thing for all of humanity for us to walk away and go, all right, I feel inspired to go out and do something cool. And tonight, the Musial Awards may be just providing that thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Wainwright. In our continual search for extraordinary sportsmanship, we don't just limit ourselves to North America, we span the globe. And all the way from Italy, a fencer captured our attention with a remarkable display of selflessness. In Ferrara, Italy, History and tradition share a timeless embrace, so it's a perfect place for a sport with roots that stretch back through the ages. Welcome to Bernardi Academy, where Emilia Rosati is one of the star pupils. E mi sono interessata. In quegli anni lì avevo sette anni e mia mamma mi ha portato in palestra per la prima volta e lì mi sono innamorata della scherma. Last spring, Emilia made it all the way to the Italian Under-23 Epe Championship in Vercelli. Emilia Rossatti. Per noi, soprattutto per Emilia, è l'evento più importante dell'anno per lei perché chi vince il titolo automaticamente ha diritto a partecipare ai campionati europei Under-23. In the final, she faced off against a familiar opponent, Gaia Traditi. Eh, sì, ho incontrato Gaia prima eh, in altre competizioni nazionali e più o meno siamo sempre eh, alla pari. This time, though, Gaia was winning 12-9 with the clock ticking down. That's when she stumbled, injuring her ankle. As Gaia contorted in pain, Amelia's focus on the match appeared to blur as her concern for her opponent took precedence. And even as Gaia rose to her feet, her pain was palpable. But with 17 seconds to go, Amelia Rosati made a remarkable choice. She refused to exploit her opponent's injury and effectively handing Gaia the gold medal. After the match, Gaia was clearly moved by this remarkable act of compassion. This girl has given me something more. She has made me understand that, despite everything, it doesn't matter the victory, but the friendship. E lei oggi l'ha dimostrato tanto nei miei confronti. E per questo penso non c'è un modo per ringraziarla. Sports can serve as a powerful classroom, imparting essential lessons 
and drawing inspiration from athletes like Amelia. Lo rifarei tante altre volte, non ho, non ho rimpianti. Amelia Rosati reminding us again that acts of genuine kindness are the victories that matter most. We are thrilled that Amelia and her coach, Riccardo Schiavina, came all the way from Ferrara, Italy to be with us tonight. Riccardo is on stage to present the award. And now, let's all say grazie and congratulations to Musial Award recipient, Amelia Rosati. So I'll bet you didn't think you'd be in St. Louis after that happened. <laughs> I would have uh, never imagined uh, to be here tonight, but I'm so grateful and thank you all for this night. Uh, it's so beautiful and wonderful. Thank you. Can you talk about what this meant, how proud you were of Amelia? I'm very proud because uh, before she is uh, uh, an athlete, she is a, a beautiful person. We go inside the Lexus Lounge, where this year's Musial Award honorees came together to experience amazing. Hard work and humility can produce excellence. Kindness really is like the biggest, the biggest thing. It doesn't really matter if you win or lose at the end of the day. Just be a kind person, and, and uh, I think that's just something that should be true whether you're playing great or not. You too can experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Coming up, the inspiring story of Cody Dorman and thoroughbred champion Cody's Wish. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the Musial Awards, is sponsored by Maryville University. Many connections, one you at maryville.edu and worldwide technology make a new world happen this year at the musial awards we have the privilege of honoring the team behind thoroughbred champion cody's wish and the honor actually extends to the racehorse himself while grateful for the chance to share their story tonight it is bittersweet cody's wish and godolphin racing are receiving the musial award for the impact they had on the life of Cody Dorman, who I met and interviewed in September. After a long battle with a genetic disease, Cody passed away on November 5th. We are heartbroken for his family and everyone that he touched. With them in our thoughts, we hope highlighting this remarkable story honors Cody's memory and continues the inspiration that Cody and Cody's Wish and Team Godolphin provided. Amidst the rolling hills of Kentucky horse country, a story emerges as special as the landscape itself. Good boy. This is Gainesboro Farm, where each of the 100 mares and 42 foals embody the promise of greatness, mirroring the image of a remarkable young man who arrived one day as a visitor through Make-A-Wish. lay down. Cody Dorman's journey was an arduous climb up a mountain that no one should have to scale. There you go. Born with a condition known as wolf Hirschhorn syndrome, doctors delivered a grim prognosis. Cody wouldn't see his second birthday, but his parents recognized something the doctors didn't. At five weeks old, he already had an open heart surgery. So he was already a fighter. Open heart surgery is just one of more than 40 procedures he needed before he turned 17. But his difficult path took an unexpected turn. It started when he was invited to Keeneland Racetrack in Lexington on their annual Make-A-Wish Day. Pretty neat, ain't it? And on the morning of race day, Cody had the chance to visit Gainesboro Farm. Think I'll come down and talk to you. Foals can be skittish, especially around someone in a wheelchair. But when farm manager Danny Mulvihill brought out one particular young horse, it was, in a word, magic. So we led the foal up. Once he stopped and had a few seconds there to figure out what was everything, he kept pulling forward until his head was right there in Cody's lap. And they just spent some time there together. He wasn't scared of Cody. 
The moment made such an impression that when the horse turned two, Godolphin Racing, which owns Gainsborough Farm, named him Cody's Wish. The two would meet again during the challenging days of the pandemic. And even though Cody's Wish was now a big teenager, once again, there was magic. <laughs> No one explained that moment better than Cody himself. He changed my life forever. I feel different about things now. I'm happier. I guess we can say he put him on his back and rode him out of depression. The Breeders' Cup is an event where history is written. So Cody wanted to be there when Cody's wish was entered in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile at Keeneland. They're off in the Dirt Mile. Out of the gate, Cody's Wish got off to a slow start. Cody's Wish is second last. Senior Buscador is the trailer, and Cyberknife is getting going, and here comes Cody's Wish. Cody's Wish in the blue colors, blazing by horses on the far outside. They were in a dead heat when they went in front of us, so I knew it was going to be close. And they're into the stretch. It's Cody's Wish and Cyberknife. They're coming down to the finish. Here's the wire. for you, Cody! All of a sudden, you got people crying around you and laughing and screaming, and coming up and hugging you and stuff. Still gives me cold chills. From the moment of that first meeting, Cody wasn't just granted time with Cody's wish, he was enveloped by heartwarming kindness. I appreciate all of them so much. I'm so thankful and proud of how they make me feel like a part of the Godolphin team. Cody left an indelible mark on people's lives. His spirit lingers on the hoofbeats of Cody's wish, a testament to the remarkable connection between horses, hearts, and humanity. We are so grateful that Cody's parents and sister wanted to be here to acknowledge the love and support they and Cody received from Godolphin Racing in Cody's Wish. Please welcome Kelly, Leslie, and Kylie Dorman. And here to accept the museal representing Cody's Wish and Team Godolphin, Danny Mulvihill and Mary Bourne. Talk about why you wanted to be here tonight. I know this has been very difficult. Why did you want to be here? Cody and that horse was on some kind of quest that we didn't see coming. It's the purest form of love I think I've ever seen between almost anyone, you know? And uh, we had to be here to keep, keep his legacy. Cody would want us to be here just to continue doing what he wanted us to do, what he wanted. Uh, I remember the words from the pastor at his funeral. He said, it's, he said, it's not about the amount of years in your life. It's about the amount of life in your years. And that just rung through me and it's rung in my ears ever since then. Danny, you deal with these foals all the time. Just so people understand, that doesn't really happen four or five month old foals, they're, they're like crazy little kids running around the place and you face them into something and they hear a noise and they're looking over here and then they're jumping this way. And that didn't happen. You know, he took a, a very keen interest in Cody. Very, very special moment. And then he goes on to become this amazing racehorse. Can you talk about his career a little bit? Um, he is noted as one of the best racehorses in North America right now and possibly one of the best racehorses in the world. And I think he had a little extra force behind him in the name of Cody Dorman. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Coming up, NBA champion and former U.S. Senator Bill Bradley is bestowed the Musial Lifetime Achievement Award. Monday at 1 Eastern, spend Christmas Day with the NFL on CBS when the Raiders take on Mahomes and the Chiefs. Happy Holidays from the NFL on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back to the 2023 Musial Awards. Please welcome Stan Musial's granddaughter, Lindsay Musial Sears. No, 
now time to present the Stan Musial Lifetime Achievement Award, the highest award for sportsmanship. Throughout his life, on the basketball court and in the political arena, Bill Bradley has been a model of selflessness and civility. He is a perfect recipient of the pinnacle honor bestowed tonight. Leave it to a friend of both my grandfather and Senator Bradley to tell you why. The Musial Lifetime Achievement Award is among the most prestigious and meaningful in sports because in an important sense, this award goes beyond sports. On the field, the court, the ice, or in whatever arena, the recipient should have achieved excellence or even greatness. Stan certainly did. But beyond that, this award represents the qualities of decency, respect, and sportsmanship exemplified by Stan Musial. In keeping with that vision, Bill Bradley personifies what the Musial Lifetime Achievement Award is about. Crystal City, Missouri, Bill Bradley's hometown. It's where Bill's remarkable American story begins. So I've known Bill since I was like five years old. Bill Bradley paid his dues to play basketball. When we would go in there in the morning, we could hear Bill practicing. When we would come back for our evening practice, you could hear Bill up on the basketball court practicing. He followed up a 1964 Olympic gold medal by carrying Ivy League Princeton to the 1965 Final Four. And Bradley with a beauty. Then the NCAA Player of the Year again charted his own course, temporarily bypassing the NBA to accept a Rhodes Scholarship. In due course, he returned to basketball. And in 1970, Bill and the New York Knicks provided a masterclass in smart, selfless, team first basketball. And that Nick team is so, it's still one of the most beloved teams here in New York City. And not just a great team, great people. The New York Knickerbockers have won the 1969 World Championship of Basketball. We had that chemistry, we had that continuity, and Bradley is the catalyst. Those seasons with the Knicks influenced the next chapter of Bill's life, his three terms in the U.S. Senate. So I really admired him not only for his intellect, but for his altruism and giving back, and especially trying to, to bring people together. While Bradley had strong views, he was also known for his willingness to work in a bipartisan fashion. This is the Bradley lesson, right? Dealing with people, respecting people. I think it is sportsmanship. We've got to learn that in politics. He's true. His values, who he is, heart slash love. He's one of the greatest people ever came out of Crystal City. And he's as honest as it can be. A map might indicate it's not that long a drive from Crystal City to the Stiefel Theater in St. Louis. But in the case of Bill Bradley, it's been a long and unparalleled American journey. A journey that has embodied the qualities of sportsmanship civility and decency, the qualities this award represents. When you see these stories tonight, and you see this humanity out there, what goes through your mind? It shows there's goodness in people. We have to focus on that which is good in people, and the humility that Sam Musial embodied, the generosity he embodied, and if we do that, we're gonna be okay. Take us back to Crystal City. Where'd you get that work ethic? There was a key moment when I was uh, 14 years old. I went to Easy Ed McCauley's basketball camp. Oh, wow. He said, remember, if you're not practicing, somebody somewhere is practicing. <laughs> and given roughly equal ability, he's going to win. Well, that was the origin of my workaholism. And then those great days with the New York Knicks, you heard Walt Frazier talk about your unselfishness on the court. That was kind of your mantra, is whatever it takes to win. The championship is what it's all about. You know, it's not about right. how many points you score, it's about 
whether your team wins. And you only win by embodying the values that Stan Musial embodied. And, um, you know, when I think of sportsmanship, I, I think of him, and that's why I'm so grateful for this award. I think, you know, and we saw it tonight in a lot of the recipients, if you lose, you congratulate the winner, whether that's in sports or politics or life. If your opponent has fallen, you pick them up and move forward. And you act out of honor, not grievance. And, and you know that with hard work and humility, you can achieve excellence. And to me, that's the essence of our teams with the Knicks and the essence of this award. I wonder what you hope the message is going forward after we leave here tonight. Take responsibility for yourself. Respect your fellow human being. Just disagree with them openly and honestly. Enjoy their humanity and never look down on people you don't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Bradley. The Musial Award for Extraordinary Character and Lifetime Achievement Award for Sportsmanship are presented thanks to the generosity of Edward Jones. Coming up, a special performance by artist Cooper Allen. With over 300 million streams of his music and 10 million followers, please welcome Cooper Allen with a song he wrote to honor the 2023 Musial Award recipients. I gotcha. Sometimes the days come in waves, life gets heavy on you. End of your road and nobody's noticing what you're going through. But I do and I see the heart underneath still being strong think you're alone but you ain't alone this is something you can count on when you can recipients of the 2023 Musial Awards. And there you have it. On behalf of the St. Louis Sports Commission and the National Sportsmanship Foundation, thank you for joining us for the Musial Awards presented by Maryville University. So long from Steeple Theater in St. Louis.